We're connected with Kobe Bryant, and Kobe, right off the bat, I want, I want to talk to you about something that a lot of people don't ask you about, your family, and especially your daughters, how much you love to spend time with them. What does that mean to you, and how you kind of, you keep that away from the public? Well, it means, it means everything to me, obviously. I mean, it, it's, um, um, you know, it's a lot of sacrifice involved in, in trying to perfect your craft, you know, but it doesn't mean that they have to um, miss out on things. You know, you still got to get up and, you know, do the softball thing and do the soccer thing and, you know, play all the games and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's enjoyable. I love it. Yeah, tough when you're, you're like, I'm a little beat up. Oh, wait, we have a softball game and you get up. Yeah, but, you know, you got to do it. I mean, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's really the most fun is being able to do things like that. Uh, what's going on? Why are you playing so many minutes? At this point in time of the season, you really don't have much of an much of an option, much of a choice. I mean, this is a it's do or die time for us now, and you know we're still you know Steve going down the injury. I think really um, you know puts more pressure on me to be out there and uh, playing the majority of the game and playmaking and scoring and doing things of that nature. But it's something you don't see this a lot in professional sports, especially where a guy just says, you know what, I'm going to do it all. I don't really care. I'm going to be out there. I mean. You were exhausted last night. It was I. You were exhausted. Yeah, I was really, really tired. <laughs> I was really, really tired. Ryan now with the dribble spinning. Kobe all the way. Left hand score. Kobe, another spin move and score. As you can see, his gas tank is sitting on E right now. And it doesn't stand for enough. It is, uh, it looks like it's about empty. Huffing, puffing, but he's been on the floor for 42 minutes tonight. He hasn't had much rest in the previous two games. It's, it's been a push. It's been a push. But I, I've worked really, really hard over the summer, and I've done a, a good job, you know, with my diet and, you know, and getting strong and staying in shape. And uh, I feel like I can, I can handle it a little bit. A little bit, but when you're tired, you know, and, and they made this point during the game, they're like, Kobe Bryant's one of the best conditioned athletes in the world. If he's tired, it's scary. Yeah, it's a little excessive. <laughs> right. Yeah, but, you know, that's when you, you, your teammates just step in and they pick you up, you know, which they did. And, you know, Dwight had a stretch there of a few minutes where he carried the offense and Powell as well. You know, we had Earl Clark stepped in and has just been a huge, huge contributor for us, and, and that's what we need to have happen. You know, you just talk about playing those minutes because of the injuries. At the beginning of the season, you see this lineup, and everybody's like, there's another ring. Here comes another ring. Take us through the injuries and how this is affected, and, and the expectations, how you guys were trying. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it, it obviously got off to a, to, a, to a bad start pretty early in, in changing the coaching system. And now, you know, there's a window there where we don't know what this team's going to look like or who's coming in. And, mm -hmm. You know, there's the, the, the field talk, and then all of a sudden that doesn't happen. So then, you know, that becomes a distraction. And then you bring in Mike and, you know, the system that he's implementing and, you know, Powell not fitting into that. And uh, so it's been a moving target all year. And, and, and that's without even getting into injuries. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a moving target. How hard has that been for you? And what's it been like for you? Well, it's been tough. But, you know, when I have tough situations, I, I, I try to look at them as challenges. I don't look at them as, as you know, something where it becomes a burden or something that's heavy on my shoulders. I look at it as a challenge. It's something that, you know, it's just a puzzle that you have to figure out no matter what. I've seen a lot more of that face this season. The, <sighs> is that because of the challenges? Well, yeah. I mean, that, that's it's the, it's the drive. It's the rage that comes out. You know, when, when that face happens, that, that's, that's the rage boiling over. How often does that rage boil over? It, ha it happens. It's been happening pretty, you know, uh, pretty often lately. I was uh, joking with Dwight when we sat down, and I was like, "What's that face like when Kobe gives you that face in the <laughs> game when he looks at you? He's like, oh, this face,' and he, you know, he did the face." I hear your Kobe's pretty good too. Kobe, <laughs> give me your Kobe. Come on, come on. <clears throat> what the Kobe face? That's the face he makes when he makes a shot. When he makes that shot, he's like, that's it. Then if he get mad at me mm -hmm. for uh, turning the ball over or something, he'll give me the death step. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just, I, I love having fun. And I know he's like mad for a second, but it's just, he's like, hey. It's like he's trying to give you like the Superman, like laser beam eyes. So it's, 
What's that moment like in the game where you turn and you look at somebody like, dude, for real? Come on. Oh, that that face. That face. Uh, well, yeah, that face is a is a that's that's the pissed off. What are you doing? Get your ass in gear. <laughs> face, you know, which um, I guess it's kind of been labeled as the death stare around here. I guess. Right, the death stare. What's the what's the Kobe death stare like? I, I, I honestly I don't know because I, I have the time I don't even know I'm doing it. It's, it's just an uncontrollable thing. It's just. A... <laughs> <laughs> so do you ever watch the game back and you're like, oh, I didn't realize I was looking at him like that? Um, some, sometimes, sometimes it becomes pretty funny. City, which have meant to this city has been absolutely historical. I know you play for other organizations, but you'll always truly be remembered by playing for one. I want to thank you for your dedication, your leadership, and the hard work that you put in. Congratulations. One word that would best describe you, Laker. Laker fans, give yourself a round of applause. You're the greatest fans on earth. Can you take it? As you watch Shaq's number go up, there seemed to be a space for another jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for that night? Yeah, I will be when it comes, yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to me, because I, I mean, I'm driving to the game uh, that night, I'm going down the tunnel, and I'm like, man, we're retiring Shaq's jersey tonight, but it was like, I swear it was yesterday. Like, I was just driving down this tunnel, getting ready for you know a series against Sacramento with you know with him in the locker room. And I mean, it was just where did the time go? It's crazy. Does that scare you a little bit? No, it's 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 exciting, um, but at the same time, it's it's perplexing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what the? We were just here yesterday. You're the old guy now. I, well, I'm, I'm one of the old ones. That's for darn sure. You know what I mean? I mean, in comparison with some of these young kids that are running around now, yeah. Your favorite players to watch? All-time players? All-time players. The Holy Trinity, Jordan, Magic, Bird. That's, that was it for me. That was right in my, when I was growing up. And you know, because I remember Michael's time, I see Tim Grover every once in a while, mm -hmm. and I'm like, hey, 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 what's going on? Has he done some things for you? Well, yeah, I mean, he, he's, um, we started working together years ago, recommended actually by Michael, and we've been together ever since. What's so good about him? Well, he's he's methodical about his craft. You know, I play basketball. This is what I do best. There are certain people who really pay attention to their craft and really try to perfect it. Mm -hmm. And he's that for strength and conditioning. That's what he does. What did you do? Because you are back. You, you have the spring in your legs again. There's a youthful bounce to you. What did you do? Worked my tail off, man. That's really the... the the end of it. You know, I had a really good summer. Um, was able to strengthen condition uh, my body. Um, didn't really take a break this summer because I didn't have to because I didn't have any injuries. Mm -hmm. I think the Olympic team, the experience helped out a lot because I was able to kind of play and stay in rhythm and but still wasn't overtaxing my body. And then uh, obviously the diet and shedding weight and mm -hmm. all that fun stuff and the ice baths and it's, <laughs> it's a lot of commitment. That's what I'm saying, you really do. Yeah, it's a lot of commitment. What is Vino? Explain Vino, because it's a phenomenon. That, that's Vino. That's Vino. That's Vino. It's, uh, you know, um, age as well. <laughs> it gets better with age. <laughs> hey, you have now really become a Twitter phenomenon. Why, why have you adapted to Twitter so? Right, well, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, and you've had some really great Twitter moments. What is it about Twitter that, how you've adapted so well to it? Well, I'm a smart ass at heart. So like, Twitter is <laughs> like really it's low hanging fruit for me. I mean, it's just, you know, I just say what I feel and just leave it at that. So, you communicate though a lot with the fans. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point. I mean, that's the purpose of me doing that is to be able to have dialogue back and forth and with the fans. Mm -hmm. you know, what's the point of actually just doing a Twitter if you're not actually interacting with them? It doesn't make much right. sense. Phil's on Twitter now. What do you expect from Phil? Same thing. <laughs> you know, he's a smart ass at heart and he has no filter. So he'll, he'll, he'll blur a lot of stuff out and it'll be vastly entertaining. Will you tweet it, Phil? 
Um, man, probably, probably. I mean, there, there's some things that we, you know, we'll talk about. Whatever, we probably will. What was it like seeing him back in the building? Well, I wanted to make sure that everything that he had taught me um, was on full display. I didn't want to make sure I had any mistakes or things that he taught me or told me over and over and over. And that night, I forget him, and he, I know he's sitting there like. How you forget, you know what I mean? So I wanted to make sure I, I gave him a really, really good performance. Give me an example of one of those, one of those things. Um, making sure I stay out of traffic and dribbling through traffic where there's a lot of bodies and the ball can be knocked loose and things like that. And I wanted to make sure I played a nice, clean, open game. You still want to impress that guy, don't you? Well, absolutely. I mean, this is, he taught me how to play. So it was like he taught me the details and the nuances of being a champion. So. Five to 23. Lakers down by 15 points. This is something that's truly unacceptable. You know, I've been a determination. I'm just going to keep on coming and coming and coming. Two in a row for Kobe. Yes, he does. Bang! He knocks down the bucket from the outside. Brian needs help. Oh, he goes down the middle and dunks it again. Who needs help? Kobe doesn't. The clock is an issue. Three, two. One, Kobe, a three-pointer. It's good at the buzzer. Kobe has made it a two-point game. Lakers down, in trouble, quickly. Bryant, three from the corner. Yes, Kobe! If you look at the play right before we called timeout, you know, it took a little bit longer to get to it, but I was open. Kobe, good little fit. Three to tie! Three to tie! We're tied to one of nine! Ray was going to come out and blitz me. I saw him coming. I just had to kind of... Decoy in a little bit and just kind of wait for him. Gray comes out to double. Kobe around him. Kobe down the middle. Dunks it home. Kobe Gray. Anybody that I line up against on any given night, I don't think they're going to be able to outwill me. I just refuse to believe that. Lakers win it in overtime. And Kobe Bryant, 41 brilliant points. I want to ask you, sometimes when you're out there, do you feel like Superman? Do you feel like there's a cape on and you can do anything? <laughs> when you're in the zone, yeah, some, yeah, you feel that way sometimes. But for the most part, you know, I, I think the best way to describe it is like, uh, you know, you, you're a conductor. You're conducting things that, that are going on. It's like you're, you're, you're orchestrating the symphony. But it's like you're changing the symphony, too. Let's go Toronto game. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kobe, you hit a couple of ridiculous shots. What's going through your mind in that game, in that moment, and right after the game, too? Well, um, I said, well, I just got to free myself, get open, and make one shot. You know, that's all I kept saying to myself. Just make one shot. You, I mean, you've made thousands and thousands of shots. Just make one. So I make one, and now you get the ball back, and you have yourself in, in the same situation. You're like, okay, just make one. <laughs> and then you just keep getting closer and closer. But that wasn't a, just a normal one shot. What was that? one shot like and what's it like because I notice sometimes you look back at the defender to watch their expression what's that like yeah it's uh you know you, you get the feeling from the defenders where it's like oh man no just can't not <laughs> not tonight you know sort of thing and um and I thrive off of that you love that don't you oh yeah you love that like defeated look yeah oh, absolutely what do you say to the folks in the front row because a lot of times you'll turn and say stuff to I'll them. talk to them every now and then you no know, I, I might tell them well, you know check out this upcoming three or this dumb about to get Dwight a dunk right here you know I, like, I just kind of I just have conversations with them from time to time hey um the future how much longer can you play I could probably play another five years really well, probably yeah after that then what um I don't know, who knows? I'm not saying I'm gonna play five years, but I could play, physically I could. Do you wanna play five years? Um, right now, no. Right now, no, it might change, but right now, no. It's too much. Right. I wanna ask you about Dr. Buss and what he means to you, because I think you once hinted people don't understand what it's like to be a Laker, or at least the expectation here. Mm -hmm. And in a city where there are huge stars, this is what people really expect season after season after season yeah. championships well that, that's something that that started you know back in the days of you know the Minneapolis Lakers and it just happened to be one of those franchises that seemed to one win every year with George Mikan and then obviously when they moved here to Los Angeles that tradition continued and, you know bringing in magic and cap and worthy and baby B and AC and all those guys and 
Uh, it's something that LA's simply become accustomed to. You know, we're not accustomed to just being comfortable with division championships or, you know, the NBA Finals um, defeat in the seventh game. That's not something that we're happy with. We, we right. want to win and win every year. With that said, does this team understand that? I think we do now, yeah. I mean, it's a process, though. You know, it, it's like, you know, it, it, I think it shocks your system a little bit. And it's like, whoa, these people really do not care about what just happened Monday night. Like, you know, we just had a phenomenal game. We beat, you know, Oklahoma or whatever it was. And everybody's like, so what? <laughs> the next game. Move do it in June. Mm. You know, mm. and, and it's just uh, that pressure is different. What is it, in your words, even though you're done talking about it, what is your relationship with Dwight like? What is it? No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's like a brother relationship. I mean, I, you know, one of the brothers who kind of like, you know, he, yeah, you can have two siblings in a household that just don't have the same personalities. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and like, you know, he's off doing one thing and I'm off doing something else. That, that's, that's pretty much what it is. How is it? Because I know with my brother, and we had different personalities, time to time, I'd want to try and kill him. Nah, nah it was, well, because you're living in the same house all the time. You know, right. here, you know, we're with each other for four or five hours at a time, and then that, that's pretty much it. We don't have those issues. Um, but, you know, I mean, it, it, for me, it's really just trying to bring the best out of him mm -hmm. and, and show him you want to get to the elite, elite level. You know, this is the kind of attention to detail you need to have. This is the kind of you know, consistency of focus you need to have. Mm -hmm. Much, much. See it, buddy. Kobe going for 30,000. He can get it right there. 30,000 and one. Congratulations, Kobe Bryant. So, so, so. I don't feel it today. A little bit of turbulence. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Doing good. Doing good. This kid starts freaking out. I don't know what the heck's going on. We can get you two records. I mean, one in one in each hand. My backhand kind of put a topspin on the board. Oh my goodness! Did you little princess? Are you kidding me? What else can this guy do? Get out of here, Kobe. Who do you think you are, man? Look at the brand of Kobe and how big it is today. And you brought it back. And that was hard work, too. And do you think people don't acknowledge that enough? Well, I, I, we've purposely not talked about that. Because um, I think there's other things that we could focus on. I think when my career is done, you know, and then we could kind of dive into the marketing aspect and the PR aspect and the things that we needed to do uh, to put ourselves back in this position as a brand. Watched you. And every day I drive by the building you built over in, uh, in Los Angeles. That aspect of your life, a lot of people don't dial into also the homeless shelters you've built, the fundraiser you have with President Clinton. What does that mean to you? Well, I mean, that, that's, that really uh, carries a significance, a certain significance, because you, you don't want to just be remembered for playing the game of basketball. You know, when, you have a, when you're in a position when you have a, a voice, um, and a voice that people pay attention to and, and, uh, and kind of follow whatever that voice says, you, you want to be able to use that in a positive way to have some sort of impact that, that, that affects lives. It's kind of funny watching you that day with Bill Clinton, and Bill excited to be there with you. But well, your wife a big basketball fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been a big, big basketball fan. What's he like? What's it like? He's, uh, I mean, it, it was a huge honor, to say the least, for me, just to be able to, and Vanessa as well, just stand there and, you know, talk to him and him have a genuine interest about what we were doing and, and how we were going about doing it and various ways he could help. Vanessa also made fun of you because? I don't remember. More people wanted because of people. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. He, he's, uh, he's a little bit more popular than I am. <laughs> <laughs> President Clinton, a little more popular. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you about uh, the specific players. Uh, let's start with Meta and how he's doing. And he says he's going to come back like in, you know, three days yeah, after. He, he heals. He heals extremely fast. I mean, his body recovers very quickly and um, you know, he'll be out way ahead of schedule. What's he like? What's it, what's it oh, been he's like? one of my favorite players I've ever played with. Why? You know, he's extremely, extremely intense. Um, plays hard every single night. 
Um, and, uh, you know, he's a competitor, fierce competitor. Pow. People love to get down on Pow. But talk, it's hard for I always Pau. keep saying those people are idiots. They don't know the game. They just don't know the game. What's Pow like? Um, you know, he's just a, he's just a good person. Um, very intelligent basketball player. Very high basketball IQ. Understands community very well. Understands um, what's it like to be selfless and to help others be successful. What do you say? Because you talk to Powell a lot. What are you guys talking about on the court? Oh, what the defense is doing. I mean, we, we communicate very, very easily because we play together for so long. And we've seen pretty much every defense we could possibly see. So it was very easy for he and I to talk about what we're going to do next or what happened with this last play. I mean, that's most of the times what we're talking about. When you're out there, what are you seeing? And what's going through your head? I'm just seeing what the, what's going on on the court, just seeing what's in front of me. Um, no more, no less. As always, good talking to you. You got it, man. You got it. You're connected with Kobe Bryant.